simple linear regression demonstrates how one numeric predictor affects a numeric outcome. For example, it can reveal where the age actually translates to higher paychecks. So let's learn how to build a linear regression in R, how to check all model assumptions with one simple and intuitive command, how to visualize and interpret the results, and much more. The data in this picture clearly shows that the real-world data often contains contaminations. Therefore, it's crucial to look at the data before rushing into modeling. For instance, in this scenario, I would clean the data by removing the high-income individuals earning over 200 k's per year because they are outliers and totally not because I'm jealous. Additionally, I'd exclude all the individuals who are nearing retirement as their salaries tend to decline. The data cleaning step is vital and often overlooked. Remember the phrase garbage in, garbage out? If we skip data cleaning, our model's performance could be seriously compromised, and we'll see it in a moment. For now, let's take 100 random people from the industry and build our model around them. To build our model, we'll use the intuitive LM function. Within LM, we only need two arguments, the formula and the data. Here's how it breaks down. On the left side of the formula, we'll place the variable we are interested in predicting. Unfortunately, this variable goes by several names – response variable, outcome, dependent variable, target, and more. It can get really confusing. On the right side, we'll place the predictor variable. Predictors also have various synonyms – independent variable, explanatory variable, regressor or covariate if we talk about linear regression, feature if we talk about machine learning, and even risk factor in epidemiology. <coughs> so many names for the same thing. Makes stats seem way harder than it actually is. After building the model, we need to make sure the assumptions are satisfied. Otherwise, we couldn't trust our model. The check model function from the performance package is so intuitive and powerful that once you've used it, you cannot unlearn it. Believe me, I use it every time I model. Looking at the assumptions, I could say that the model fits the data pretty well. The linearity assumptions looks fine, the line is not completely straight, but there is no dramatic nonlinearity to see. The variance is homogeneous. There are no outliers or influential points. And finally, the residuals are normally distributed since they are inside the confidence intervals, which means our data is normally distributed. Now, when we model unclean data, the model fit would be far from reality. And we'll even get a warning that our model misses the maximum values. You know, those rich folks I'm totally not jealous about. Besides, the normality of residuals would be also compromised, so I would stop trusting my model. Therefore, it's really important to clean the data before modeling. Oh, by the way, if you have a lot of data, it's important to check assumptions visually, like we just did, instead of conducting statistical tests. For a lot of data, the tests would often show significant results, meaning that assumptions seemingly would not be satisfied while they are actually satisfied. Here is an example of the Shapiro-Wilk normality test, which magically finds non-normally distributed residuals, even though they are totally fine. Now, since the assumptions of our model are satisfied, we can visualize model results. And by results, I mean visualize model predictions. For that, we'll use another very intuitive function called plot model from the sjplot package and provide three arguments. The model name, the type of predictions, we'll use effect to get an effect plot, and the name of a predictor we want to visualize. And if we really want to, we could easily show the data on our plot. And voila, our plot shows that salaries increase with age. This plot is nice, but it misses two important details. It doesn't exactly show how quickly the salary grows, and it doesn't demonstrate whether this increase is significant. The plot model function solves both problems. When we use show values equals true, 
instead of type equals effects. Namely, it tells us that we have $1,080 increase in salary per year. And this increase is highly significant because the estimate doesn't cross zero. And while the significant stars are often enough, sometimes we need an exact p-value. To obtain this, we'll use the top model function from the same sjplot package. This function produces a nice publication-ready table that not only provides exact p-values, but also reveals the equation of our model. This equation describes the straight-line relationship between the x-axis and the y-axis, or, in our case, between age and salary. And it helps us to interpret our model. Specifically, an increase in age of one year results in an average salary increase of $1,080. It's important to note that this increase can vary. Sometimes it's as low as $540 and other times as high as $1,620, depending on people's job roles. The model indicates that there is a 95% chance that the salary increase falls within this interval. That's why it's called the 95% confidence interval. If this average annual increase of 1080 bucks occurs consistently, we obtain the slope of the line, represented by the beta coefficient in the model formula. Put simply, the slope indicates the average change in y for every one unit increase in x. As with any slope, it needs a starting point and the best start of any slope is usually zero. When our line crosses the y-axis, we find the intercept alpha in the model output. In our case, this implies an unrealistic scenario where our salary would be 57,000 at birth, which doesn't make any sense, and that's why the intercept of a model is often not interpreted. The true value of the formula lies in its ability to predict future salaries. By plugging any age value into the model equation, we can estimate the corresponding salary. This means we can ask the model to tell us how much we'll earn when we are 40 or 50. For that, we'll simply replace our alpha with the value of the intercept, 57.5, and the age with 40 or 50. Assuming our life remains relatively stable, at 40 years old, we could be earning over 100 Ks, and by 50, our paychecks could exceed $111,000. Essentially, we've just forecast our future salaries based on the available data. Naturally, R provides several convenient functions for making such predictions, the most well-known being the predict function. This function allows you to input your model and the data frame containing the variable you want predictions for. However, I personally find this function somewhat unintuitive. A much better choice is the immense function from the very powerful immense package. It not only produces predictions for any age you desire, but also reports the 95% confidence intervals and offers a wide range of additional capabilities. Asking for predictions beyond 60 years old isn't recommended, as we intentionally limited our data to include only individuals up to 60 years old. Here, it's crucial to differentiate between interpolation and extrapolation. Interpolation means predicting values within existing data points, and it's very useful. However, extrapolation, which means going beyond the data range, is risky and unreliable. Predicting salary at birth is a perfect example of a nonsensical extrapolation, because at the age of zero we can't earn anything. Now that we understand how to interpret our model, the next crucial question we need to address is how good our model is. Your clients or scientific reviewers will definitely ask this question. What they typically want to know is how well our model fits the data which is summarized by the coefficient of determination, denoted as R squared. R squared quantifies how much variance in the data our model explains. It ranges from 0 to 1 with a simple rule. The higher the value, the better the fit. However, interpreting R squared is context-dependent. 
For instance, in physics, a model with R squared near 1 is usually desirable, while in biology, even an R squared of 0.2 might indicate a good model fit. Despite this context sensitivity, some guidelines proposed by smart individuals such as Cohen exist, and we can ask the effect size package to interpret any value of R squared for us. In our case, the R squared value of 0.139 indicates a moderate relationship between age and salary. But why moderate and not strong? Well, um, that could be because age is most likely not the most crucial predictor for salary. I mean, when I sit on the sofa, do nothing and just get older, my salary won't grow. So what is an important predictor then? Well, education is. Specifically, folks without a high school diploma start at 70Ks as early as 18 years old, while those with an advanced degree begin with a salary of approximately 140Ks at the age of 25 after completing their studies. However, I'll cover it in a separate video in this series where I'll demonstrate how to interpret a model with a categorical predictor. Until then, if you are enjoying this video so far, please consider hitting the like button. Finally, the last thing I found difficult was accurately describing the model with sufficient detail for others to understand and reproduce my results. If you have similar problem, the report package solves it, even if you only use one function to literally report your model. Namely, the report function identifies the type of model you used, shows how well the model fits the data, interprets effect sizes, describes where the predictors are significant and which direction the slopes go, and even reports how 95% confidence intervals and p-values were calculated. I personally found it very useful, but I'd love to know what you think, so feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. But the best thing is, the report package can help you correctly describe most classic statistical tests and models, and can even describe your entire dataset, so make sure to check it out.